Hey everybody. So today we are going to be talking about the reactions of metals with acids. If you remember back when we talked about table J, um, one of the things we pointed out was that hydrogen was on table J on our reference table, kind of down toward the bottom, just above copper, silver, and gold. And we talked about it then, the fact that metals would potentially react with things that contained hydrogen, and that certainly includes our acids. So let's take a look at this in a little bit more depth. So first thing I want you to remember is that only free state metals above H2 on table J will spontaneously react with acids. And that word spontaneously is pretty important to us here. It means we don't have to do anything extreme to start the reaction. Um, later on in later units, we'll be talking about non-spontaneous reactions and what's involved with those. Okay, but for you to understand at the moment, if you're looking at table J, any metal that is above hydrogen on table J will react with acids. So that basically means that copper, silver, and gold will not react with acids. So what happens when these acids react? Well, metals that react with acids, they will produce hydrogen gas and a salt. It's a very simple single replacement reaction. We're going to look at a few of these and break them down together. Okay, but these are the two products that are always produced when an acid does react with a metal. Just like in a neutralization, you're always going to get a water and a salt. When we react an acid with a metal, we will always get hydrogen gas in the form of H2, remember, diatomic, and some form of salt. Now, because table J is ordered in um, strength of reactivity with your most reactive substances being at the top, those metals at the top of table J will react the fastest or the most readily with acids. And that's something I'm going to have you looking at um, in another assignment. So um, that means the metals that are down closest to hydrogen will react the most slowly and those below hydrogen will tend not to react at all. So our generalized equation for the reaction of an acid with a metal is our aqueous acid reacting with our solid metal will give us hydrogen gas and an aqueous salt, which means the salt will remain in solution. It generally um, will be something that is a soluble salt. Okay, so here's our first example. Here we have hydrochloric acid reacting with zinc, and it forms hydrogen gas and zinc chloride. Now, there are two mistakes in this equation. One of them is that it isn't balanced. The other one is in how one of the formulas are written. I want you to take a moment and see if you can find the mistake before I do the correction. Alrighty, so I'm going to go in and um, do our balancing and correction now. So I hope that you found that the mistake was here, that we needed ZnCl2 because the charge on the zinc is plus 2 and the charge on the chlorine is minus 1. And when we do our crisscross to get our correct formula, we have to um, take that into account. So I'm going to erase those because we never show those in our final formula. I'm going to erase those um, charges on our ions. So now that we have them written properly, how do we balance? Makes it really easy. You throw a coefficient of a 2 in front of your hydrochloric acid. That gives us two hydrogens on each side and two chlorines on each side and one zinc on each side. So that works out well. Let's look at another example. So here we have sulfuric acid. Now remember, you should be learning the names of these. They are all on table K for your reference. So this is sulfuric acid reacting with calcium to produce hydrogen gas and calcium sulfate. Okay, so we have our acid our metal, which would be a solid, our hydrogen gas, 
Now, specifically hydrogen gas, and once again, pointing out, yeah, it's diatomic, so we have to have that subscript of a 2. And then this would be our salt in the form of our calcium sulfate. Alrighty, so that's just how simple these are. Let's do a few practice problems with these, um, and you're definitely going to want your reference table out if you don't have it out already. So, example 20. According to reference table J, which of these metals will react most readily with one molar hydrochloric acid to produce hydrogen gas? I'm going to give you a moment to try to solve this problem. So if we are looking for the metal that would react most readily, we're going to go to table J and find the metal on our multiple choice list that is closest to the top. And if you do that, your best choice is potassium. Potassium is third down from the top. It's only superseded by lithium or rubidium in terms of reactivity on table J. So cal or sorry, potassium would be our best choice. Alrighty, let's try another problem. Example 21. Two chemistry students each combine a different metal with hydrochloric acid. Student A uses zinc and hydrogen gas is readily produced. Student B uses copper and no hydrogen gas is produced. So that's our background info. There are two questions that go with this. I'm going to have you try to answer both. First, state one chemical reason for the different results of students A and B. And second, using reference table J, identify another metal that will react with hydrochloric acid to yield hydrogen gas. Take a moment, use your reference table, try to answer this now. Alrighty, so let's attack the first question there. State one chemical reason for the different results of students A and B. Well, it could be as simple as student A used zinc. Zinc is more reactive than copper, according to table J. Alright, or that student B used copper, which is much less reactive than, than zinc, which was used by student A. You could think about it either way. Now the second question, using reference table J, identify another metal that will react with hydrochloric acid to yield hydrogen gas. You could have chosen any, any metal off of table J that is above hydrogen. So you literally have over 14 choices, okay? So could have been lithium, rubidium, potassium, cesium, barium, strontium, calcium, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, Titanium, manganese, you couldn't use zinc because we already mentioned zinc, chromium, iron, cobalt, nickel, tin, or lead. Any of those would have been absolutely fine. All right, let's look at another example problem. So example 22. This is also another Regents question. Here we have iron solid reacting with nitric acid to form iron nitrate and hydrogen gas. So the first question is, what is the total number of oxygen atoms represented in the formula of the iron compound produced? So let's try to answer that now. Alrighty, if you said six, you're absolutely correct. This is a throwback question, just getting you to start to think about the idea that um, subscripts and coefficients, etc., have meaning and how they relate to one another. It would be six because there's a coefficient, or sorry, a subscript of three on the oxygen inside the parentheses and a subscript of two on the oxygen outside the parentheses. And we would take a look and we would say that, hold on, trying to find my cursor here, that three times two equals 6. So that would give us our result. Okay? Now, the second part of this question is really the more interesting one. Explain, using information from reference table J, why this reaction is spontaneous. And there's that word again. Now remember the rule on table J, anything that is above hydrogen 
will react spontaneously. So try to give this one an answer. If you said that according to reference table J, iron is more active than hydrogen, and thus the reaction is spontaneous, you would be right. Okay, so in, if that metal wasn't iron, if it was something lower like copper, silver, or gold, we would not get a spontaneous reaction. That's where we're going to leave off with the reactions of acids with metals. Going to try a little bit of practice, and the next and very last subject we're going to be tackling in acids and bases is the idea of titration.